Hello everyone, welcome to this component overview video oh, for Dark Souls the Board Games, The Knight. In this video I'll be going over her not only the cards, uh, well, the character card, right, and the cards that come with The Knight. Hey, I will also be going uh, listing some opinions with said components as well. Um, for a quick summary to begin with, The Knight is the all-around character uh, has almost the second best in every stat, at, uh, with the exception of Faith. Uh, so he's pretty much able to do more than most of the characters, but the cards that come with him plus his baseline ability makes him the most defensive character and probably the easiest character for solo play. Here's the artwork for the night. It's a character card. It, it has the background of the... Uh, Lothric Castle as you approach it the first time in Dark Souls 3. Um, it's the area in which you would find where you also find the first wing in night. All right, so here we have the knight's stats. Um, he has a uh, honestly, with the exception of his faith, he has the second highest in every stat throughout the in every tier, and I believe the first and second tier of faith, he still has the second highest. Maybe just the first. Strength he has the highest, along with the warrior at max, but he still starts out at the second highest. Um, he also has the highest threat, which matters with a certain ring uh, that makes it so you can take the threat token. Uh, his actual ability is the abil is called Steadfast, uh, which lets him post block roll add a blue die. So the ability to avoid another 1 to 3 damage. The knight's starting gear is some of the better well-rounded gear, to the point in which I would actually probably recommend the knight for a solo playthrough, if anything, of the four original classes. The armor is the only one that has a blue die, although it has no dodge. It has a black resist as well, oh, which is very nice, and for the other classes, if they want to use it later, it has a low strength requirement, as does the dex and strength requirement on the longsword, which is a blue attack die, hey, but if you want to place the costly four stamina, you can add a black die. Unless you really need it, I don't recommend ever doing that. Uh, and then the shield is just a nice basic shield, um, with no stat requirements and a black die. Next up, we have the treasure cards from the class. Um, the Lothric Knight armor is very nice. It has a blue resist and a blue armor, as well as two upgrade slots, but more importantly, it says when you end your activation, gain one health for each enemy on your node. It's very nice for tanking, but it you have to remember, it's only when you end your activation, not when any activation ends. So you still need to survive the hits of things that will target the closest as opposed to the threat. Uh, but if they target the threat and the closest, it can be a nice turn to end on. Here's uh, But also you have to remember, that's still only two health gained. The requirements for it aren't too bad either, so that mo I believe the warrior is able to use it pretty early on, on uh, at tier one for its strength and faith, but as well as the knight being able to do, uh, do so as well. Everyone else has to upgrade to a tier two, I believe. Um, yes, the Herald has to upgrade only its Faith to a Tier 1, but it's still Strength to a Tier 2. The Broadsword seems very nice. It's one of the weapons that lets you move first, assuming you spend the stamina for the greater two attacks. I would think that the second range one, or the second uh, one here, the two cost, would be a good idea to spend for. And the four would be if you really need the damage, but it's not as bad as the Longsword is. Uh, the n one movement beforehand is nice, I would prefer afterwards, and then, of course, it also provides defensive stats, something you don't see too often with weapons. The one upgrade slot is also nice. The spider shield ends up being a two black, which isn't bad, but also makes you immune to poison. I have yet to see anything that uh, deals poison at this time, but I haven't faced all the bosses yet either. So, let's move on to these rings. Now remember, rings are armor upgrades in this game. Uh, not, uh, which is why they're removable. The blue tier stone ring 
ends up making it so that after you summon damage from an enemy attack, regain one stamina. This can be very nice in a dodge build, build providing you're dodging um, attacks you're going to uh, not die from. But it's probably better in a tank build when you know you're going to get hit. This always brings this kind of wording though always brings in the debate of is zero damage suffering damage. Most say no. And finally, for the regular treasure items, we have the Sun Princess Ring, which I have found is actually not all that easy to obtain or usable for him, the knight that is, as it needs a maxed faith from him. But when you end your activation, gain a plus one health, which is very nice no matter who it's on. Finally, for the night, we have his transposed treasure cards. We have the Elite Knight Armor, which is a 35 and a 15 in Strength and Faith, with two upgrade slots, two blue ar armor, and one black resist. Seems like a nice armor er, that could be very easily used for the uh, warrior as well as the knight, but also can be used by the Herald, providing the Herald maxes its strength out. Um, obviously not assuming campaign where everybody can reach a 40 in all stats. The Falcon has a lot of high stat requirements, but two, uh, two orange dice for only three stamina and two blue otherwise, that is amazing, as well as the fact that it too also adds defensive capabilities and has two upgrade slots. But again, these are transposed items. I'd be surprised if they didn't have two upgrade slots. Uh, the Faram armor, once per encounter, at the end of another character's activation, you may take the aggro token. I'm a little sad that this is once per encounter and not once per uh, time around the table, but I don't think the game has any way a, to specify that unless they're going to go with once per activation. Regardless, the it has an orange defense die and a blue resist die. That is wonderful. Now on to these two shields. We have the black iron great shield, which requires a lot of dexterity to wield. But it's ignore icons on enemy his attack and magic behaviors. I'm still a little unsure with how that exactly works, but from what I can tell, that means if the attack itself has a push, you ignore it. Not if the movement has a push, which is the case most of the time. But I'm not going to argue against the one physical defense dot being blue and then two magic dice, which I don't think I've seen anything with. That might actually be the highest resist. And then the Twin gr a Dragon Great Shield is honestly just a straightforward high, forward, high requirement. Two physical resist, one magical resist. Well, I hope this was helpful information. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, feel free to press that like button. And if you didn't, go ahead and press the dislike but try to leave a constructive comment, and if you do, and leave a comment in general if you feel like it. Feel free to share the video, oh, if you think other people will, wanna, will enjoy this, and if you want to see more like this, such as the other three classes once I get around to them, um, or more Dark Souls stuff, more painting, or my unboxing and various other things, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful time. Bye-bye.